Hey, everybody. Hello, everybody out there. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Veronica. How are you today? I am in such a good mood. Tom is a hoot. He's put me in a yes. good mood. <laughs> he will keep a smile on your face for he sure. Definitely will. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. We have a great show for you guys this evening. Yes, we do. Um, and tonight we are going to be interviewing Tom Warlick, who is the lead of the group called the Briar Hoppers. Um, and they're such a cool group. They're one of the oldest bluegrass bands left in the world that are um, still running. They've been in continuous running. Um, we getting, we're getting a few people to come in. Um, hey, Ken Knox, how are you doing? He says, hello, ladies. Hi, Ken. How are you today? Um, we've got MD Moore in and a few others. So if anybody has any questions tonight for Tom Warlick, um, again, he's the lead of the group called the Briar Hoppers. If you have any questions or comments, um, just leave them in the comments section below. We are live streaming tonight on Facebook and on YouTube, and that's the Hall of Fame's Facebook and YouTube pages. Speaking of which, with Ken Knox, we might add that Ken Knox and chairman of the board are members of the North Carolina Music Hall of Fame. I believe their induction year was 1999. I believe so, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. so we've actually had several of our um, past inductees and current inductees, ones coming up, to pop into the chats and say hello to everybody. So again, if you have any questions, just stick them in the comments below and we'll try to get to as many as we can. And tonight, like I said, is gonna be super exciting. Um, but we also want to tell you to make sure that you um, subscribe to our channels. That way you get the notifications whenever we do go live or we have new news um, coming up. Um, again, we have tonight, we're on Facebook Live, we're on YouTube Live. You can also follow mm -hmm. us on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and also tonight we wanted to mention that you can donate to the North Carolina Music Hall of Fame. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Um, and the mission here is to preserve, commemorate, and honor all types of musicians, singers, songwriters from the state of North Carolina. And one of the main ways that we do that is with our induction ceremonies that we hold every year. Um, except for 2020, of course, because 2020 has been a great year. Um, yes, yes. We have <laughs> we some are, great inductees this year. Yeah. Great inductees. Yes, we do have great inductees for this year. Um, we still have a 2020 class. We're just postponing the ceremony until it's safe for everyone to attend and for us to have that. Um, and again, tonight, the Briar Hoppers, um, Tom Warlick, that we are interviewing is one of our 2020 inductees. And so this is part of us rotating with our up and coming 2020 inductees, with our past inductees. So this week, it's a new one. Next week, we will talk to a past inductee. Um, let's see if we got any more comments here. I don't see any right now. Don't see any. Yeah. But if you guys want to interact with us, go ahead. Send us some yeah, questions. Yeah, by all means. Uh, Tom Wallach, he is here. He's ready to talk. He's ready to give us a, a great history of, of the Bry Hoppers. So feel free to write in. I, I see here a Brian Connor Sr. Mm -hmm. says, hi, hope you are well and safe. Well, we're trying, Brian. Yes, we are. All is well. All right. So you want to go ahead and bring Tom in, Debbie? Sure thing. All right, Tom. It's showtime. WBT presents Briar Hopper Time. Way till the sun shines, Billy, where the clouds go drifting by. We will be happy, Nelly. Don't you sigh. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Saturday session with all the world famous Pleasure Plus music makers. 
the Briar Hoppers in a half hour tape recording, 30 minutes long. Right. Welcome, Tom. That was so much fun. I, yeah, I, it was, it was glad, uh, I'm glad to hear their. I'm glad to hear their voices again. Uh, you know, they were around a long time, but uh, you hear them again, and you just remember why you're doing this. So, cool. Yeah, beans. and and the announcer that we just heard on that clip, you were telling me earlier that was not Charles Crutchfield. That had to be Bill Bivens. Okay. Uh, they were multiple MCs for the Brian Hoppers. It was Charles Crutchfield until he became station manager. And then Bill Bivens took over. And I don't know if anybody remembers Cloudy McLean. Clyde McLean, he was the first weather guy on WBTV. He was also an announcer for the Brian Hoppers. Now, Tom, what, what year was the group formed? Uh, the group was formed in 1934, and here's what happened. Uh, back in the day, here my mother was born. Well, uh, she's a young person. <laughs> Look at me. Oh, goodness. Anyway, um, in 1934, the radio stations at the time they could not play records, so they had to have live orchestras or live bands in the radio show. Hmm. And at this time, uh, Charles Crutchfield was hired from a uh, station in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And they had just uh, upped their signal to 50,000 uh, thingies. Watts. Thank you, darling. 50,000 watts. And they could be heard from Maine to Miami. And uh, a company called, and it was the Consolidated Drug Company of Chicago. And they said, do you have a hillbilly band to promote our products? And Crutchfield lied and he said, yes. So the Brown Hoppers are based on a lie. <laughs> and he, uh, he, he called a guy in the back. His name was Johnny McAllister. Johnny was from New York City. He oh, worked my. for CBS. And he was the spy to spy on WBT. Johnny McAllister also sang in Broadway. And he had this great tenor voice. And he was also a member of the original Boston Celtics basketball team. So he could play anything. So he said, Johnny, go get us some people who can play ball them cabbage down or something like that. And he went in the back and he found about five or six people who could play. And they said, here's our hillbilly band. They did not have the name yet until Charles Crutchfield and Bill Bivens went on a rabbit hunt. And all of a sudden, this rabbit went through the thicket, and Bill Bivens yelled, look at that bra hopper. And Crutchfield said, that's the name of my band. So that's how it started. Ooh, okay. Wow. Now, Charlotte's radio station back then, WBT, it was one of the most powerful in the U.S. at that time, wasn't it? Yep, absolutely. There were, only they like two or three, they were only like two or three stations at that time that had that type of wattage. So uh, yeah. it was even uh, more popular than, uh, more powerful than WSM, which was in, not, uh, which was in Nashville that became the Grand Ole Opry. Right, right. So, and the Briar Hoppers actually had a lot of fans. I understand that um, Elvis Presley was a big fan. Earl Scruggs was a big fan. Um, yep. Early Seckler, um, yep. several were, were really influenced by the Briar Hoppers. Yeah, uh, Elvis got to learn from the Briar Hoppers about, from um, Homer Briar Hopper, Homer Dry, who was, uh, he left the Briar Hoppers in 1940 and went to uh, Raleigh. And they became friends because Elvis was on the radio up there, and Elvis got to be uh, got to be friendly of the Brahoppers. Pearlie Seckler, he was a member of uh, the Flat and Scruggs band. If anybody knows Flat and Scruggs band, 
I and do. Her, 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 her was actually my great great uncle. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, he, yeah. he and his brothers wow. used to get in front of the radio and they had sticks. I interviewed the guy. They used to get sticks and they played like they were the Bry Hoppers when they were on the radio. Wow. Um, we know that Buddy Holly listened to it. Uh, his last song they ever recorded was Wait Till the Sun Shines Nelly, which is almost like the way uh, the Brown Hoppers did it. Wow. Uh, Doc Watson was a fan. Uh, he used to busk on the, on the streets of Boone when he was little, and he was blind. And the Brown Hoppers were up there, and, one, uh, and uh, Waddy Grant threw a, a quarter into his cup. <laughs> And the guy next to uh, Doc said, you know who threw that in? That was Whitey Grant of the Bra Hoppers. And Doc snuck a radio in into the North Carolina School of the Blind so he could listen to the Bra Hoppers. Years and years later, when Doc got <laughs> famous, they were at a gig and uh, the Bra Hoppers were at the same gig and he called the Bra Hoppers in and they thought they were in trouble for doing something wrong. And they went into Doc's trailer and he went into his pocket and he said, you see this? This was the quarter you gave me when I was a little boy. Oh, and I yeah. kept it all this time. And Whitey Grant said, well, I guess we invested into your future. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. That's amazing. It really is. It really is. These stories are. Yeah. So what do you think it was that people liked so much about the Briar Hoppers? It was different. I mean, people were listening to Mozart. They were listening to all this stuff on the radio. And this was really the first time that they got to hear the music that they grew up with. Got to understand that a lot of people moved in from Ireland and moved in from England and moved to Carolinas, especially uh, in the mountains. And they were looking for that music. Uh, and they couldn't find uh, the farming in the mountains was horrible. So they went down to uh, the Piedmont of North Carolina, Gastonia, Lincolnton, Charlotte, different places, and worked in the mills. And they got to listen on the radio to these songs that they grew up with. And they started playing it. That's how Whitey and Hogan got started. They worked at the Lore Mill in Gastonia, which is now Goodyear, which is now a uh, condominium. But uh, one of them brought a guitar at lunch and the other one brought a mandolin. And they started playing there and they became the longest lived country music duo in country music history. And Charles Crutchfield hired them in the 40s after the original group broke up. So that's why people liked them. I mean, they listened to the farm report. They listened to the soybean prices. They listened to what they could get for cow dung. They listened to all this stuff. And oh, by the way, the bra hoppers are going to sing. And my father, um, he listened to them. My father's 87 years old. And he started listening to them in the 30s. And uh, he would get off. He'd get off the school bus or whatever donkey or whatever he was on, get off from school. He would do his chores. And then he would eat an old sausage from the morning before. They'd warm up the radio, the old Delco battery radio. They didn't have electricity back then, so they used the Delco battery system. And they, they listened to the Bry Hoppers. And he said it was because the Bry Hoppers were on before the Lone Ranger. And they wanted the radio to be warmed up so they can hear the long radio. So, uh, that's his so we story. We all grew up on the Long Ranger. <laughs> and a uh, fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. I mean, you can't get over that. That's a little bit better than y'all know what it is. It's Bra Hopper time. So uh, you know, you got to figure out which story is believable. Right. <sighs> My goodness. These stories, Tom, are truly priceless. I mean, I'm in amazement that this group has been around for 80 
six years. It's been 86 years, and we've had, hold on, I got my roster up here. Hold it. You may not see me. We've had 63 members since uh, 1934. Wow. I am, you know, I am number 49. Oh, wow. 49. Now, how many are still living? If, okay. If you know well, let's talk about this a little bit. Here is a calendar from 1938. It had a thermometer with it, but it broke. Wow. You see this little girl right here? Yes. Yeah. Little Billy Burton Daniel. She is 97 years old and living on the coast of South Carolina as we speak. Wow. She is the last, um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not going to say original, but uh, she joined the group in 1936. And wow. uh, she's probably the last one. We had uh, another person die. He was a member of the 1950 group, and he just died like two years ago. So she's really the only one from the Pre forties that's still alive, and right? She, yeah. So uh, she gave us a lot of uh, history, a lot of everything that went into our Brown Harper's book. So uh, yes. we're thankful exactly. for her. You know, we've had so many people ask us in the past couple of weeks, whenever we're talking a little bit more about the Brown Hoppers, to release a list of everyone who was in the group. And I yep. see that we got another um, comment here from Jennifer Moon. Please post the I roster. See that. Yeah. Well, what I can do is I'll send it to you and you can post okay. it as you will. Okay. I, and this is only the list that I know about that based on all the telephone calls and all the research that we've done, we found 63 people. Wow. And there could be more. And a lot of people say, well, you know, my grandpa was on stage with them a couple of times. Well, sometimes that doesn't count. Uh, but uh, how we got started with this was uh, I hired the Brown Hoppers to play in York, South Carolina for my dad's birthday. And this was like in 2002. And they took a liking to me. They liked the way I played the banjo. They liked the way I did emceeing. And Don White, who was a original member, said, you need to be a part of the Brown Hoppers. And I was going through kidney failure at the time, like I am now. And I just couldn't commit to that. In 2003, he died. He was the last original guy. And in around 2004, the remaining bra hoppers who were part of the group said, would you and your wife write a book on us? And we mm -hmm. said, okay, that'd be nice. And it got me through dialysis and got me through a lot of stuff. Uh, but we wrote this book. You can get it on Amazon if you want to. If not, that's okay. And it's really 10 decades now because I couldn't get them to change the title. <laughs> I'm going to get that and I want you to autograph my copy. Yes. Well, I'll, I'll send you one. Just send me and your address and I'll send you one. The and, uh, you know, and from there, we thought the Brahoppers were the Whitey and Hogan's of the group. Shannon Grayson. Shannon Grayson, the three-finger banjo player who played bluegrass way before Earl Scruggs did in a bluegrass band. And, no, oh, I got this nasty email from this old woman. <laughs> and she said, I was a member of the original Brahoppers, damn it. And this is the real story. And from there, we got to get the, uh, the original brown hoppers that were really forgotten. And we found their family. Uh, we did not know that one of the brown hoppers was a cousin to Arlene Dahl. We did not know about all this stuff until she just opened the door for us and uh, said, here's the original story printed, if you will. And that's why we can say we know the history of the Brown Hoppers from 1934 to 2020. Wow. Wow, yes. that's impressive. Yes. Yeah, I would love to have a copy of that book. But now the books that well, I I'll have. I'll be giving out too. So, okay. That's why I get a lot of money for this stuff. Hmm. <laughs> <All right. laughs> 
<laughs> now, the book that I do have is um, a copy of Daniel Costin's book with the photography for the past, mm -hmm. I don't know, 20, 30 years. They're probably it 20, was, about 25 or 30 years. Yes. It started during the Whitey and Hogan years. And uh, he worked with us. He did not have the original photos, but I'm glad he did what he did because it just kept the thing going. Like it says, uh, the circle rolls on. Right. And that, that's really what it is about the Brian Hoppers. Yeah, we're not that great anymore. We're not famous, but we keep the golden age of radio alive. Right. And we keep the spirit of the Brian Hoppers from the 30s to the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and right now, we keep it alive. We only do a couple gigs a year. We don't need to because we have full-time jobs. We only do special gigs. The number one, pay well, but number two, that mean a lot to a lot of people. That's what we do. That's cool. We have a great band right now. I just can't say enough for them. They support me. They support us. They support the spirit of the Bry Hoppers. I mean, I can't say any more about it. And you can hear us all on this DVD. Yeah. And you can one of those as well. Thank you. You can see that and you can get it on Amazon or you can contact me directly. Anyway, I just can't say enough about them. Yeah. Well, yep, you you are already embedded into the North Carolina history of of music. So after 86 years, if you did one gig a year, you're there. Yeah, and we're about to ready to do a gig uh, for a local radio station um, since we can't get together. I mean, a lot of us, you know, we don't want to get the COVID. And so we've been recording online. Everybody does a little bit. And then we got one fellow who's real smart in this computer stuff. And he can put it all together and make it into a cohesive song. So mm -hmm. it's going to be on, I think, WCCB on channel 18. It used to be 18 when you had an antenna and you <laughs> pin foil in order to get the signal, uh, which I'm still used to. But still, uh, I think that's going to be there, and that's going to be one of our uh, concerts for the year. And okay. uh, we were planning for the uh, Hall of Fame. If it's next mm -hmm. year, it's next year. But mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, the uh, it all continues. Very good, very good. Send me the information on that performance, and we're going to share it with everybody. I hope to get it myself. I'm sure you will. I don't know, man. You know, I understand. And I think it's I think it's so special that at our induction ceremonies we always have the inductees to perform if if they will, if they can. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking forward to having you with us. Um, Absolutely, we would love it. Love we're it. looking forward to it too. And again, we're going to play public domain songs, so nobody has to pay anybody. And that's mm -hmm. what we're really good at we're really good at the old songs granted we got some new stuff but you know out in public um how can i say that we've got a lot of fans who are from the 30s and 40s we don't call them groupies we call them droopies <laughs> and they want to hear what they used to hear on the radio right and right. you can hear this on uh, WTBI's Country in the Carolinas. They're going to start playing this again. But uh, this was a precursor for the Ken Burns country music show of which he forgot to come to North Carolina. <laughs> and so WTBI said, we're going to do a show on the Carolinas. And it's Earl Scruggs, Arthur Smith, the Bry Hoppers, a lot of folks. Uh, and that's a great uh, DVD. I've got one. I don't know if you can buy one or not, but I'm sure you can see it online. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, we do our best to get our get our word out. So when when this group when when your group was traveling throughout the state of North Carolina, if someone got sick, sore throat. I'm sure that there were a lot of tonics that were available. 
Well, Lordy, Lordy, let me tell you about the tonic. Okay, we want to hear about hey, neighbors. Neighbor, hey, neighbors, neighbors. <laughs> we want to hear all about it. If if, if you go out, especially you ladies. And you're going out and you're getting all your kids fed, ready for school. And you go out and try to start the car. The car doesn't start, battery's dead. You go back into the house, neighbors, and you yell at your husband, making him <laughs> wish he hadn't woke up that morning. Well, what you need is something called Peruna. That's P E R U N A. It's not the dog food, that's good stuff. But this stuff is good as well. It may not charge your car battery, but it will recharge yours. Aunt Tootie, Aunt Tootie in, South, in Pesler, South Carolina, wrote me and she said, Tom, she calls me Tom. She said, I'm so proud of the bra hoppers for promoting the Peruna stuff. I take it every day. I feel better. I eat better. I play cards better. I just can't tell you how much I love this stuff. And we said, Aunt Tootie, how much of this stuff are you taking today? She said, I don't know, about a pint, maybe a fifth. <laughs> and, you know, she's been a teetotaler all her long life. I and, love it. And I we had to tell her that uh, Peruna was 40 proof. So she's <laughs> been putting around the buzz on all these years. <laughs> so go so in Go into your private hey, stores and buy this stuff, this junk. I mean, good stuff. Pull off the box top and send it to the station, and we'll send you an ugly picture of it. Don't know why you want one, but we'll send you one. We're a million seller. There's a million in the cellar. My Lord. Please hurry up before we run out of them, the man said. How old is that bottle? Yeah, it, uh, I mean, Oh, crap. Uh, it's probably 1938. <laughs> I tried a sip of it, and it's terrible. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Now, guys, oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, neighbors, neighbors, don't go around losing your job because you got gray hair. We're on some of this stuff we call color back. A O L O R hyphen B A K. <laughs> Put it on your comb, rub it across your dome. Your gray hair will go away faster than you can say, Omer Bra Hopper. <laughs> it doesn't say on the label how it gets rid of your hair like it does, but I guess all you folks wouldn't be buying it if it got rid of your hair, roots and all. <laughs> <laughs> Pressfield had this way of stealing from um, different radio stations. And uh, he heard people that made fun of the products and saw how much the products sold. And all this stuff, I mean, Zymo trophies. Don't go around choking the person that's coughing on you. Choke the cough, Zymo trophies. And Radio Girl Perfume, where is that bottle? But, you know, it's, it's here. here it is. It stinks so bad that Gene Autry came to the Brahopper show, and Homer Brahopper put all this on him, and Gene Autry pulled the sweater off of him, went into the alley, and burned it. I <laughs> can't. <laughs> uh, <I> <laughs> Yes, and I see uh, Kelly Roberts. Kelly Roberts wrote, The Bra Harper mm -hmm. Show always had advertisements like Peruna did those companies approve of the way their products were presented. Well, uh, Miss Roberts, I would say that originally, no, they weren't until Charles Crutchfield showed them the sales reports. They were selling truckloads of this stuff. Track, uh, they were selling trailer loads for, off a train oh, in wow. uh, Charlotte. So uh, the salespeople did not care how bad they were looked at. I mean, look at crazy water crystals. This made you this made you more regular than collard greens. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. 
That's great. Now, Tom, we're going to get some of those pieces, right? Because we talked about setting up a display for you here at the museum. I would yeah. love for visitors to be able to see that. Yes. I thought you said we are going to get some pizzas. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get that thing. I was craving some pizzas, so yeah. <laughs> that yes. was an exhibit at the museum. <laughs> to put right next to yeah. your your exhibit that oh we've got we've got photos i mean um the bra hoppers in the 40s they got the bright idea of having individual pictures taken and printed on stock that they used for uh grammar school you know that old cheap paper and they paid like a half penny a piece and so they did only one a piece so everybody would have to buy one of each band member and so they paid a nickel a piece. So they made a lot of money back then. And uh, we have a couple of them we might be able to show. Uh, a couple of things about the bra hoppers you need to know. In the 40s, uh, World War II was going on. And WBT would record the bra hopper shows on a transcription disc. And they'd either send it to Los Angeles or to New York City. And they'd beam it to the theaters in World War II. From that, the Bra Hoppers got letters from the European theater. It only say, Bra Hoppers, WBT, Charlotte, North Carolina. They got 10,000 letters a week. Mm. And also, they uh, played at hospitals for children who had polio back then. There was a polio uh, uh, epidemic back then. Yes. And they would not play in the parking lot. They would go into the hospital. Yes. And finally, the bra hoppers would not play in a segregated theater. Wow. They had to have everybody represented from that community in order for them to play. And a lot of times the white folk would be at the orchestra section and the non-white folk would be up at the top and the bra hoppers would leave the stage and they would go up to the top section and they would play for everybody. Oh, wow. Something you need to remember about the bra hoppers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Very cool. Oh, great, great story, Tom. And and those are things that need to be told. That that it needs to be told. It does. Um, they went through a lot of stuff. I mean, everybody went through a lot of stuff back then, and I just can't imagine. Well, I can see it today, and I'm not going to get on my political uh, horse today. But uh, we are preserving what the Bra Hoppers. Uh, was steadfastly involved with. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. And I'm so, so glad. I'm so glad you're doing this and keeping the tradition going. Mm -hmm. um, we are honored. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, was it Charles Crutchfield's idea to have kids in, in the group, to have a family feel to the group? Well, after a couple years, they had this family. It's called the Brahopper family. Dad Brahopper, Mom Brahopper, everybody. And then uh, Crutchfield got the bright idea of getting some kids involved. And so he held a contest. Uh, all the kids came in to the station. They tried out. The first person who came in that they accepted was a little gentleman named Homer Dry. He was from Union County, uh, for, uh, uh, Marshville, I think, uh, same hometown as Randy Travis. And um, Homer got the gig, and now they wanted to get a female. Now, you got to understand these kids had to live in Charlotte by themselves in a hotel room, go to school by themselves on the bus, and then go to WBT and do the shows. And so the second person, they wanted a female, and there was a traveling sales guy from Wilmington, North Carolina, and he had a daughter named Billy. Her name's actually Willie, 
uh, but she changed it to Billy because she didn't think Willie would be good on the radio. However, my grandmother's name was Willie, but I digress and <laughs> try it out. And, you know, they're eight or 10 years old and she got the gig. And so here was little Billy Burton and Homer Dry, who changed his name to Homer Bryhopper. And they became the Briar Hopper children. And believe it or not, Homer Dry was really the first person to really get on the air with, with records because he recorded for DECA and he uh, recruited a lot of the Briar Hopper uh, personnel in order to do breakdowns and country songs and things like that. And that's why we know they had a three finger style banjo back in the 30s because of his recordings. So uh, he did that. Billy Burton went on to become a jazz singer and she moved to uh, Los Angeles, became the best friend of Billie Holiday. Mm. And they roomed together. They played together. And uh, Billy's had such a life. Uh, she has a book out and a lot of it's tragic. But, uh, you know, she says that being a Brown Harper was like watching a movie a long time ago. And she just wants to see it one more time. Wow. And that's from a 96, 97 year old woman. Wow. 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 And there was a lot of the Briar Hopper members that went on to become very famous acts. Um, yeah. Like Fred Kirby, the singing cowboy. Yeah, and he started out he started out as the victory cowboy because he was selling bonds in World War II. And he sold the most bonds in the US. And he was actually invited to uh, the parade for uh, Harry Truman. And this was after the atom bomb fell. And everybody saw Fred Kirby and they started yelling, sing atomic power, sing atomic power and it embarrassed President Truman, of course. But uh, Fred was a, uh, you know, a long lasting fix fixture in Charlotte and in the Carolinas. Uh, Don, uh, uh, Claude Casey, Don White, uh, Fiddle and Hank Warren, they went on to do Western movies. Uh, their most famous was called Swing Your Partner. And there's a clip of them singing and whatnot. Um, but uh, a lot of them became very famous. Fair, uh, famous uh, Earl Scruggs. He subbed banjo for the Brown Hoppers. I think he became recently yeah. famous. Yeah. And then there was Arthur Smith as well. Yeah, Arthur Smith, guitar boogie. Arthur Smith. Um, he, uh, he also came from Spartanburg and his daddy brought him up to WBT and his brothers and they started a radio show and then a TV show. He became a big entrepreneur and in, in his office in later years. Yeah. Behind him, on the back wall was this big picture of a yacht. And we say, talk about the yacht. And he said, that's where dueling banjos came from. Oh. Because he won the big lawsuit against MGM, <laughs> and uh, he got all this royalty money. And right. <clears throat> right. I, Tom, I want to hear about, I have a hole in my bucket. <laughs> I got a hole in my bucket. Yeah, that's a song uh, that you may hear on our, our new CD called Hit Still. And the song is publicly domain, but it's also about back in the old days, you got your beer by going to the beer place and putting beer in your bucket and you took it home with you. Well, in this song, you got a hole in your bucket. That means you don't have a lot of beer. So that, that's the origination of that song. Yes. Yes. We got to play that one. We have a short clip of you guys playing that song from that new CD. So I'd love for us to play that right now. Play it. My book has got a hole in it. My book has got a hole in it. My book has got a hole in it. I can't find no deal. I went down on the corner 
with my bucket in my hand. I'm a looking for a woman, ain't got no man. My bucket's got a hole in it. My bucket's got a hole in it. My bucket's got a hole in it. I can't buy no beer. I'm singing. There you go. <laughs> I have to say, um, the people singing, uh, Dan Henson, he's a guitar player and lead singer. Uh, Zach Limhouse, Fiddlin' Zach, uh, he's also the history direct, one of the history people for uh, York County. Uh, he's playing fiddle. Uh, we also have uh, Eric Quinson playing banjo, and he's an excellent guy. He can play Scruggs and Reno all at the same time. And we also have Alan Shad, who's the three-time national flat picking uh, guitar champion. So they all came together in Charlotte. And, you know, only thing I did was play the bass. And bass players are people who don't play anything else. So uh, Now, you play banjo, too. Yeah, I play banjo. Yeah, I play old-time mountain style and three finger. But uh, they do it a whole lot better. When I joined the Braha Hoppers, there was a banjo player who played for Bill Monroe, so I wasn't about to pick up the banjo. <laughs> right. Okay. True. Now, you guys were singing that song before Hank Williams was singing that song, and I think he's the one that made it popular, right? Yes, he did. He made it popular, and uh, Brown Hoppers were playing that. Uh, in the 30s, uh, the Brown Hoppers were playing mostly Tin Pan Alley and Old Time Mountain songs. Mm -hmm. until they got into uh, 1940, 41. And that's when they got rid of the Tim Pan Alley songs. Oh, why don't you come home, Bill Bailey? Why don't you come home? They didn't do that anymore. They were doing doing college down, boy, bake them whole cakes brown. So they started with a lot of the old mountain songs after uh, 1940. So, yeah. Yeah. Now we have another one off of that same album called Rolling My Sweet Baby's Arms. Let's play that one too. There you go. I like that one. Rolling my sweet baby's arms. Rolling my sweet baby's arms. Lay around the shack till the bell train gets back. Rolling my sweet baby's arms. <laughs> that was actually uh, our warm up, and we did not know that the uh, person up in the studio was recording. So that oh. was a, that was a warm up song, and we weren't, you know, we were just messing around. Okay. Well, it was a good one. Yeah, I like it. That's one of my favorites, actually. Yeah. And I think we have one more um, clip. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about this one. Okay. It's from David Holt's television show, Fire on the Mountain. It's when the Briar Hopper Hoppers oh, yeah. appeared on there. Yep. For my mountain home, back to old Smoky Mountain, back to that old hometown of mine. The birds in the trees and the honeybees. Yeah, that was uh, Don White singing. Uh, he was an original member of the group, joined in 1934. And he was playing an electric bass because it was hard for him at that time to carry around a big bass. Uh, and uh, that was the group, I would call that the 1943 group, if you will. Uh, you had Phil and Hank Warren, and, uh, you know, he uh, played for, I don't know if you ever heard of Charlie Poole. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he played for his son's band, Doug Poole. So uh, Phil and Hank knew the family. And Andy Griffith used to be their uh, paper carrier. Uh, the uh, banjo player was Shannon Grayson. Uh, he came from uh, Sunshine, North Carolina, near where Earl Scruggs grew up. 
and he had that weird bluegrass uh, three picking style that nobody else was playing at the time. In fact, one of the first bluegrass songs that was ever recorded with a banjo lead was with uh, Shannon Grayson and the Bry Hoppers. And that was uh, Jesse James. Mm -hmm. I think it was Jesse James. It could have been something else. But anyway, uh, that's how important that guy was in the transition of old time country music to bluegrass. And then you had uh, Whitey and Hogan, and I said Phil and Hank. So that was probably the band from 1942, 1943, up until the 1990s. Yeah. <clears throat> nice. Well, we have a question here, a comment, a question for you, Tom, from Ed Robinette. Okay. Edward Robinette, who said he is with the Kannapolis History Association. Mm -hmm. And he says, in our files at the Kannapolis Museum, we have a copy of a song written by Albert Millis, a musician from Kannapolis called The Towel City of Kannapolis introduced by Fred Kirby and the WBT Bry Hoppers in 1948. On the cover is a picture of the band with Mr. Mills holding the sheet music at the microphone. There's an autograph on the cover to my favorite kitchen captain, Linda Joe, Kurt Webster. Oh, how wonderful that is. Kurt Webster was also an announcer for the Brian Hobby. Okay. Uh, and, oh, man, I, I haven't heard that before. And, if you know, I'm glad that that's available. That, that's, that's a superb. There's okay. so much stuff out there that uh, hardly anybody's even scratched. Uh, we're even having WBT go into their bunker. They built a bunker in case of a nuclear attack. And there are transcription discs down there of the Bry Hoppers, and we're having them look right now for it. So, all this good stuff that's out there on them, I mean, I just can't get over it. It's just beautiful. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for that. And yeah. if, Ed, if that cut off your question, because it was a little bit long, it looks like maybe it had cut a little bit of it off. You can write back in if you want to. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question, though. Thank you. Yes, that was excellent. Excellent. And you do have a few people that um, have have written in. Um, Pamela Price Garcia. Hey, Pam. Interesting stories. Charles Etcherson said, sweet. Who me? Ken Knox. Awesome. Well, let me talk to you about the chairman of the board, and I may be wrong on this one, but my father used to teach um, high school in Lincoln, North Carolina, at West Lincoln High School, and he either taught a member of the chairman of the board or another group that was real close to them because he talks about it all the time, and I meant to call dad today and ask him about it, and I forgot, but... Um, yeah, the chairman of the board, uh, they're, they're, uh, we, we hold them in high regard in terms of what they did in Carolina's music. They're great. Yes, yes. They, are, they are very, very good. And uh, Ken Knox does an excellent job with, with keeping that legacy alive. <coughs> yeah. When did we disband? We never disbanded. <laughs> Now, and that's one of the things, and I, that's a great question because people think after 1950, the uh, bra hoppers stopped. They didn't. Uh, continued on doing private parties, doing other little gigs here and there up until today. So for 86 years, the band has been continuous. But that is an excellent, excellent question because I get that crap all the time. Not crap, I'm sorry. I get that question all the time and you're starting to think well they're not the original members i say okay what about the chuck wagon gang what about the allman brothers what about all the big bands that are still playing today i mean you just have to keep the tradition going 
Granted, yeah. we don't have people that are 110 years old playing with us anymore, but we just try to keep it going. So yes. that is an excellent, excellent question. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Chip Hayes says, great history of our NC music. Was so glad when Dwight Moody joined the band. Yeah. Dwight Moody joined when Fiddlin' Hank started getting uh, ill. Uh, he had you know, his illness and he's getting old. And they hired Dwight Moody of, uh, and he was fiddle player for the Moody Brothers. Uh, prior to Dwight, uh, we had different other fiddle players playing for us, especially um, uh, different bands. But uh, Dwight came in, he basically saved the group in 1980. Um, and he and uh, Whitey Grant were the two people who physically hired me. Uh, to join this. And when I joined, uh, Waddy died, David Beast died, when a couple other people died, and it was just uh, Dwight and myself. And we had to figure out what we we're going to do and do it quickly. Uh, the uh, head person at the time, WBT, said, keep it going. And as we started getting going, uh, Dwight died. So it was just me. So uh, we had to build it up very quickly. But Dwight, uh, I can't say enough about Dwight. He he was a great guy. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel sad every day he's not here. Sure. Sure. Right. Sure. Wow. We have, um, well, Ken Knox says we thank you. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we have... Yeah. Another um, 2020 inductee, Charles Whitfield, writes so funny and great history that, that you have. I think he was speaking of your grandmother. Um, she, she was enjoying it with the tonic. <laughs> that's good. Um, everybody knows that. And that's what we do. We do the old commercials in our stage show. We emulate the golden age of radio. And we play like we're on the old bra hopper show. And we started out, y'all know what it is. And people say, well, it's bra hopper time. And then we go into wait till the sun shines nailing. We do a couple songs and then we do the commercials for color back and other things like that. And it kind of kills time and it lets the musicians rest a little bit. But I think, you know, a lot of the folks who remember the show remember the commercials more than they remember the music. Because, yeah. you know, Crutchfield would say, oh, the musicians are kind of ratty and moth-eaten, but they sound kind of pretty. <laughs> so, um, you know, we we address ourselves like that, and we, we just want to talk to that one person out in the audience who's getting it. And if we can talk to that one person, and it's just between us, you know, it's like neighbors, neighbors. I'm just talking to you gals. Here you are on a Friday night and you're listening to the bra hoppers and you're not out on a date. What's wrong with you? <laughs> well, what you need is radio girl so perfume. Bad. Just a little douse on your ear. And you'll have the boys lined up around your house and will make your daddy mad. Now, I got a letter from Aunt Tootie down in Pelzer, South Carolina, and she sent me an, uh, the clipping from a newspaper. And it said one girl bought some of this and put one drop, mind you, one drop too many, behind each ear. And her boyfriend nibbled her ears off. <laughs> To read the instructions before you buy this and you buy it, tear off box top like it says, we'll send you an ugly photo. Oh, <laughs> That's great. Uh, we're going to have to get a bottle for that. Right. <laughs> That's y'all's problem. I don't know about that. Oh, <laughs> uh, there's the babies. Yeah. There's the first pan. So you said the young lady in the middle here is the one that's yep. still alive. That's Billy Burton. Let me go through. Uh, on the piano is Clarence Edders. 
Okay. And he played at a lot of churches and he played at a lot of theaters when they played the organ and the piano during uh, the uh, movie. The next guy up there on guitar is Don White. They use called Curly. Next guy on the bass is Big Bill Davis. He was from High Point, North Carolina. And his uh, granddaughter currently works for the World Health Organization in Geneva. And that's where I get all my COVID information from. And then in the middle, in the middle that's Billy, little Billy Burton holding a microphone. And the back, that's uh, Thorpe Westerfield playing the uh, banjo, and he had a harmonica thing on his neck so he could play both at the same time. Jane Bartlett is the female playing the fiddle, hmm. and uh, Johnny McAllister is the funny-looking guy playing the fiddle, and sitting down with a mandolin, that's Homer Drive, and in the uh, little frame, that's uh, Charles Crutchfield. Oh, okay. That's Charles. Yeah. Okay. And we got another one. This, I think you said this was 1942. That has to be 42 because that has uh, Don White on bass. And it's got uh, Harry Campbell, uh, Claude Casey, and uh, Cecil Campbell. And uh, the, they either played for the Bra Hoppers or for the Tennessee Ramblers. They just mixed and matched. It depends on where the next paycheck was coming. <laughs> this was the group that was in a lot of the movies. Yeah, and then we have another one. This is from, I think you said 1943. That's 43. There's yeah. um, uh, uh, Fred Kirby and Fiddlin' Hank Warren at the bottom. And at the upper left is uh, Waddy Grant and with the banjo, Shannon Grayson. And there's Arvel Hogan with the mandolin. Mm -hmm. And Arvel Hogan's granddaughter is now a star in the bluegrass scene. Uh, playing banjo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Lord. There's uh, the big group and uh, the people I told you about, but you also have uh, Arthur Smith on the far left standing up. Um, so um, they were a big group. They played on the Dixie Hayride yeah, on WBT and other shows that were syndicated throughout the United States. Very good. Yeah. So, so much. So much history. It's amazing. It is. It's amazing. Uh, a lot and of history, a lot of North Carolina history, a lot of South Carolina, a lot of Car a lot of South history involved. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, even though we wrote the book and you know, we've done this and that, we've only scratched the surface of what they actually did throughout, uh, throughout the United States. Yeah, so they, were even on, they were even on Garrison Keillor in the oh, 1980s. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they were supposed to fly out, and they wanted to save the money and drive, so they negotiated with Garrison to keep the money from the uh, airline, and they all drove out. And uh, they had to take their wives with them, and, of course, they said that all the Brahopper members drove. It was only the, uh, the wives that told them which way to turn. <laughs> but they always talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> so whenever folks come out to see one of your shows, um, they will see your current band. We have a photo here of the band. Yep. Okay. That's us. And we also added a new member, Don Murray, uh, Dish Rag Don, as we call him. And um, like I say, a lot of us, all of us have full time jobs. Alan Shad has been in Nashville. For the last couple of weeks, uh, doing his thing. Uh, uh, Henson got a new job. He's working a lot. We're all working a lot. So we always have members that are ready to play when it's ready to go. But uh, these are a great bunch of guys. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Nice. Now, what is, what is your website where people can go and get more information about the Briar Hoppers, their history, and the upcoming shows? Well, I gave up on Blogspot because I just got tired of it logging in. So we're on Facebook. Only thing you have to look up is uh, uh, Legendary Briar Hoppers. And we'll come up. 
And we keep everything up to date, photos, videos, uh, cameos, uh, dittos, anything like you want to say about that. And uh, we keep that up and we share it with our friends and uh, anybody can get on there and just see what we're up to. Awesome. Very good. Great. Very good. It has been an awesome interview, Tom. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope it didn't bo uh, bore too many people. I know there's a lot of things you can. No, no, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of things you can do on a Tuesday night. You can go to fish camp. You can go to Hardee's or McDonald's. Uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. No, don't do that. I had a bad experience this afternoon, but I'm not going to discuss it. Okay. But I'm glad for those who were able to show up, and especially Miss Roberts. Uh, appreciate that, and I uh, hope you had a good time, and I hope we were able to give you a little bit of knowledge. That's the only thing we want to do, give a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of appreciation for what was the past and what can be the future. Sure thing. Sure thing. Yeah. Very good. And we've, we're getting so many more comments. Um, everybody's loving the past hour that we've been on here, listening to your stories. Um, Pamela, very interesting. Mm -hmm. I know Pam. So I like the shirts. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and because ah. that style is coming back, that that plaid. Yeah. Okay. Cannot says congratulations on your induction. Yes, congratulations. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. We are more than honored to have um, the Briar Hoppers as members, our newest members of the North Carolina Music Hall of Fame. Um, and along with our other 2020 inductees, it's it's been a crazy year, but we're so looking forward to when we do get to see you in person and do your actual induction. Um, let's see, we got another comment here from Ed. Great stuff, mm -hmm. Monica, I want to get with you on the Tao City song before long. Okay for the Hall of Fame. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, that'd be fun. That'd be yeah. fun. Great. Good. Great. Yes. Thank you. Yes. All right. Well, this has been fun, Tom. We should definitely do it again. Maybe go into more depth on um, any new information you dig up because I understand it's your mission to kind of dig deeper and find more history from the Briar Hoppers. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a daily thing. Yeah. Well, yes, thank you so much for being with us. And well, I thank, thank you for having me. I appreciate this. And, and, the, band does, and the band does too. I mean, it's just not yeah. me. Uh, I know most of the history, but uh, there are other guys behind me and in front of me and beside of me that make this all happen. I just can't say enough for them. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. So Great. we want to thank everybody for watching tonight. Um, mm -hmm. And we can go ahead and announce, Debbie, who we're going to be interviewing next week. It's going to be equally as interesting. We'll be yes. talking to the family of Elizabeth Cotton. Yes. Oh, no, really? Yes. yes. Holy crap. We have in next week, 7 p.m. Sharp. Yeah. John Evans Jr. is the great, great grandson of Elizabeth Cotton. Um, they are such a wonderful family, and he is carry, carrying on her tradition. Um, yeah. He's got a lot of projects going on where they're trying to preserve her history. And um, their entire family is very, very talented musically. Um, one of the grandsons can play guitar just like Elizabeth Cotton, upside down and backwards. Oh, man. She played it backwards. Yeah, she, played it. Yeah. she was left-handed, but she played a right-handed guitar. And she learned how to do the chords backwards. And it just blows my mind. It's unbelievable. It, yeah. it is unbelievable. Yeah. And so why don't why don't you um, tune in next week, um, Tom, and join the chat with us. And we'll be talking yeah. with their family. Yeah, we'll do it. And thank you, guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. And it's still Briar Hopper time. It is still Briar Hopper time. Yes, oh, yeah. It is still, still Briar Hopper time. We have our 2020 inductees lined up on the schedule for their shows as well. We're going right into December. Um, so whenever you can tune in on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m., do so. 
and buy their CD. Yes. <laughs> and their yes. CD, you'll love it. It's it's such a good album. Okay. All right. So everybody, thank you, uh, thank you. appreciate it. Thank yes. you for watching. Appreciate uh, it. To <laughs> remember to subscribe and comment and like this video. Um, if you have any suggestions on who you would like to see us interview next, let us know. Put it in the comments below and tag us. Yes. Um, and I think we will close this very special episode with the closing segment that you guys, the Briar Hoppers, always played at the end of your radio shows. Mm -hmm. Please, please. Please don't leave now. The live music is fixing to start right up. But we've enjoyed singing for you. Hope to see you again sometime in the very near future. But until we do, lots of good luck, goodbye, and God bless each and every one of you. Wait till the sun shines, Nelly, when the clouds go drifting by. We will be happy, Nelly. Don't.